So this topic is on uh, deep science angel investing. So for my sins, I also am director of MIT Alumni Angels here in Silicon Valley in Northern California. So I'll say a little bit about what that group is and what we do. And then specifically, is it a good idea to invest in deep science companies at the angel level? The angel level meaning you know, this is usually before the venture capital group comes in. So first of all, uh, you know, a little bit on how does MIT Alumni Angels work? How does the organization work? Who are they? Who are we? There's like five chapters uh, around the country. And I think there's a few people in the uh, participant list here. Uh, and specifically, you know, is deep science investing uh, a good idea or not? Why would you do it? Uh, uh, what's the portfolio? And, and talk about a little bit about more portfolio effects, uh, my views on you know, how to spread out your uh, your allocation and how would you evaluate a deep science company so first of all about mit angels it's a group meet uh, northern california there's about five chapters uh, i'll talk about the northern california chapter but basically the others are very very similar um we're probably one of the largest though in northern california and uh we meet about five times a year it's a uh, uh, volunteer run no one gets paid uh, and really basically look at interesting companies. The companies don't have to be from MIT, but rather the investors are, are MIT alum uh, who are accredited investors and, and their friends can come as well. And so, um, uh, but they have to be hosted by the alum to, to come and uh, join the group. Uh, so it, it's a screening committee, uh, look, evaluates the companies that submit usually there's about 40 50 companies every session that apply and we have to choose uh, it's usually often quite difficult for companies to actually present and then the companies present uh, they're given 20 minutes to present to the group 10 minutes to actually present and 10 minutes of q a so it's usually a bit longer than the um usual um sort of pitch sessions in the valley we have often only given two minutes three minutes but it's more of a it's more of a conversation um that happens uh and also like i said uh, same as before type things in the chat if you'd like and usually people um you know they're writing checks 10k uh sometimes as high as 100 not usually much higher than that but 20k 30k that kind of range and it's usually you know, five or six people might might do that uh we've got loads of companies we've invested in uh of different kinds the common theme here is they're all what i think mit calls is tough tough tech you know like curing pancreatic cancer um uh, detecting antibiotic resistance uh you know uh, sort of, uh, uh, high reliability face recognition um a chip silicon chip that can smell um or taste uh, uh a number of things a new lidar type systems um and so far we've had uh well over a thousand companies that have submitted and about a hundred odd companies we've actually uh listened to actually in person and um if your company actually presents they've got about a third of a chance of actually getting money uh so it's, that's, it's usually a bit higher probability and we spent about six million dollars in the last five years over 40 odd companies and uh you know the average investment for each company is about you know 140k or so but you know it can be quite small or it can be larger and uh, uh of the six million we've actually had some exits in the last couple of years and of the six million we've had like 5.6 million come back and um uh, we still have 38 companies left to go. Uh, so the way it works is you know, there's not a syndicate fund as, as such. You know, each person decides whether they want to invest or not and how much. So this obviously assumes if everybody had invested in every single company equally, uh, they would get uh, uh, this would be the kind of return that would go after a few years. Um, uh, but this is one of the dynamics we'll talk about. Now, how long does it take to get a return? When, and will you get a return? What's the chance of getting a return? 
uh, so you know, we, we've had a few companies go out of business. We have companies that have gone exit. Still, a big chunk still in the early stage. And the trick is, you know, how can they get get an exit? Um, and of the ones that have exited, right? So you know, we've got our money back, um, but we've got some losses on the ones that went out of business. But overall, uh, we've got a profit on those on the ones that the, the, the six companies uh, that have been exited has been a net profit. So let's ask this question. Now, why, why do deep science? What's deep science? So one thing we first started, when we first started the, the MIT Alumni Angels, a lot of us said, well, why, why do you want to do one? There's so many angel groups in Silicon Valley. Why have another one, right? And I said, well, let's do something that's different and that is appropriate to the MIT brand. And we said, okay, well, let's just do science companies. Let's just do deep tech, difficult tech and just figure out what to do. And uh, there's a group of us that started and uh, it wasn't me that started, we'll talk about Swati. Swati started it uh, um, uh, before I did about five years ago, Swati Chattravedi. And uh, why do deep science? Well, well, first of all, usually by definition, um, it's uh, uh, often a unique proposition. Uh, it's something that can't be done elsewhere. It's usually, you know, it might be an idea that's developed by a postdoc or a PhD student. Um, that means usually then it's less competition. Uh, it also means that these ventures can actually get funds from grants um, and competitions that maybe um, other non-deep science companies have more difficulty to get, like the NSF SBIR grants and a number of grants that many of these companies can apply for. Whereas if you applied with your uh, dog walking startup which might be a great business uh it's going to be much more difficult to get um non-diluted financing uh often the groups can start small with small teams you know you don't have to have a um you know uh, if you're trying to do uh, uh an uber type model you have to sort of roll it out across every city and you have to have thousands of people thousands of drivers that you have to sort of hire um and it's something maybe our group could actually help. You know, the MIT community can actually help these companies and reduce the risk. Uh, finally, you know, often these uh, kinds of companies can actually make an impact rather than making, you know, a game or something of that nature. It can actually make an impact on the world and change the world. Now, the problem with these deep science companies is often that the market development pace is often slower because people are not waking up saying that they need this item because by definition it's a unique item and so uh, sometimes we need to work a bit more to convince the uh, customers that they need this kind of uh, product so uh, how much should one allocate should one allocate anything uh, there have been various surveys out there that say like 10 to 20 percent or so but usually these surveys are, are of angels investors themselves and uh, usually that's usually a higher risk uh, subset sample. Uh, these investments are usually extremely illiquid. You might not get payback, if at all, uh, for seven to 10 years. So why do people do it? Um, so at minimum, there are short term uh, uh, sacrifices you have to want to make with the hope of a longer term benefit for a higher return that you get otherwise. Um, the statistics, the reports that come out there say, well, OK, you should try and think about 10, 12 companies. And so if you're looking at 20K each, that's a 200K investment. So it's not particularly cheap. Now, with an angel group, you may not have to do that you, because you can actually you know, maybe write a 5K check. And if you're a part of a group and uh, do 10 checks, 12 checks, then, then it becomes 50, 60K. But diversification, I'm going to double click on that. And how much diversification? Uh, do you need but basically that's the formula you need to have at least i think 10 12 um vehicles to get diversification otherwise it really is a lottery ticket so the current thinking in diversification is is is, is there's a debate now one debate one view is look just invest deep with a with a few companies and work uh, work deeply with them and try and de-risk it that way the other view is don't do that. Have as many investments as possible to increase the chance that you can get uh, a home run 
know, you can get a Google in that thing. Uh, but the problem of doing that, then you probably can't work with hundreds of companies to actually uh, um, do that. And the companies actually want, you know, they may not want you uh, if you can't spend a bit of time with them. And so there's this squirrel theory that, you know, if you keep, you could just do randomly, that every so often a squirrel will find a nut sometimes. And um, the, the 500 investments theory says, look, we really want to try and get these 50x companies, companies that give you a 50x return. The only problem is we get half our companies that give, uh, no, that go, that give you less than 1x return, that may give you a loss. And so, uh the, the argument is then you need lots and lots of companies to try and get this 50x return and if you actually do a monte carlo simulation of uh looking at lots and lots of uh, uh, uh investments and trying to do uh, randomized trials uh you find that if you have more then you've got a more likelihood of actually getting a, a bigger return and uh you know the usual approach is uh, you know, try and get lots of companies. And if you don't, uh, you know, if, if, if you've, the bigger the um, sample, the more chances that you're going to actually get that home run. Whereas if you have a few number, then you won't have the best company. If you don't get that best company in, you'll have difficulties. That's the usual thinking. Uh, I'd like to challenge that thinking. Often that uh, can be challenged. It, uh, uh, you know, you can certainly have a portfolio, you know, most will fail, a few will get, uh, Know, 10 or 100x and then you end up your 3x portfolio and so people say look i need lots and lots of companies just just so i can get that one home run uh but maybe it's better to do the other way around if we know 58 percent you know well quote unquote fail they may not fail outright but they may be less than 1x maybe you get 0.9x or 0.8x then um then you're going to actually uh uh um if we can actually reduce that number then it, you don't may not need to get that uh, outlier, which is extremely uh, difficult to get. You know, this point, uh, uh, 0.4 percent are higher than uh, 50x. How are we going to get that? And 65 percent are less than one x. Uh, so, what do angel returns get? You know, there's some various surveys um, uh, out there. The AAP as he says, well, you know, run at uh, um, three point. Uh, you know, 2.6 times your invested capital, which is not bad, 27% internal rate return. Um, uh, if you can get this black swan again, you know, it's, there's some other studies, you get this 2.5 returns. But if you uh, actually um, get some outliers, you know, a Google or an Uber, uh, then that 2.4x can go to 18x. Um, so how do you, you know, how do you do that? And if we compare this adventure, they're not as good as you might think. People often think, well, okay, venture, they've, they've got more money, they've got more um, uh, uh, funds, they may have a brand even, uh, they get access to the best deals, etc. But only 4% return greater than 10x their capital. Most return uh, less than 1x uh, their capital. So why is it that maybe there's a chance, why is it angels might do better than uh, venture capital. Maybe there's a couple of reasons. One, angels are using their own money. Uh, venture capitalists are using other people's money. Uh, uh, venture capitalists are often uh, compensated on how much money they can put to work, uh, whereas angels don't have to do that. Uh, they can they can just keep it and uh, um, put it in something else and use it for something else. And so there may be ways of where, where angels have an advantage. Uh, there's some work at MIT, you know, how to, you know, can you actually come up with a model, a computational model that actually can beat, uh, you know, human choosing? Uh, there's a model uh, that says that you might be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, and it goes back to the question, right? Uh, if you have lots of companies, there's much lower chance of uh, losing your money, but there might be, um, uh, uh, there might be a chance of a uh, uh, low chance of making lots of uh, uh, of money as well. So you know, this there's, this is this dynamic of uh, statistics. In M and A outcomes, ninety eight percent companies are sold for less than hundred million. Uh, so if you're investing in a company at fifty million, hundred million, three hundred million, you now you're 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 betting on an outlier. Um, and so again, angels are we're offering in, investing at sub ten million, sub five million quite often. 
Uh, so maybe you can you got may have more chance of getting a, an outsized return. Uh, so I'll give you some case studies um, of what can happen on dilution and the like. So uh, one of the angel MIT angel success cases, Squeeze Biotech, uh, it's coming out of Bob Langer's lab. Uh, what it does is it is a drug delivery company. It actually, literally squeezes cells using high frequency um, uh, uh, characteristics. Uh, to actually get stuff inside. So it turns out when you squeeze the cells, holes pop up in the cells and you put stuff inside it. Uh, and uh, that just IPO'd uh, a couple of months ago at 700 million. So you think that's great, you know, 300, uh, so like a 250X uh, return. But the company had to actually raise money all the way through to, uh, to that uh, level of return. And, and uh, really the return is more like a sort of a 10X. Uh, returns. So you have that heavy dilution. Uh, bounce imaging, uh, which is uh, um, a, a camera that's a throwable camera. Again, we invested uh, uh, properly, I think it was at the three, four million range, probably a group of us did. And um, they went through lots of ups and downs and often uh, um, it's a uh, 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 trying to get money because people didn't know, what do I want to use a throwable camera for? Why don't I want to use it? it? Goes back to that comment. Okay, it's unique. There's no competition, but there's no there's a reason there's no because people don't know what to use. But it took them a few years to figure out where their niche was. So, it's homeland security, policemen, military, where people, particularly now, where people want to reduce human contact for a variety of reasons, um, and use computer vision to see what's going on before they barge in and start um, uh, making uh, errors on who to go after, who not to go after. Uh, in television, I think we invested at a six million valuation and that got sold for around about 40 or so, um, but but in a relatively short time, two, two years or so, and with relatively little dilution. So you've got this outstanding home run that looks like a home run at seven. It's a great company. I think it will do great, uh, keep going um, uh, uh, after it's gone public uh, as it is now. Uh, but uh, uh, in television, we've got much smaller acquisition but you could argue it's roughly around the same order of magnitude of return on a uh, on a going concern basis there are other ways of doing it this is swati who started mit angels here uh using crowdfunding i think this is how the deep science how do you how do you actually by definition deep means that not many people know how it works uh and so how do you actually evaluate these kinds of companies and uh, uh, Swati started this company, Propel X, and we invested in it, the, the, the Angels Group. And what she did was well, actually, can we get experts out there to decide whether this is a good company and give them their opinion and then have the crowd invest. And this is really how the Angel Group works. Well, it usually uses the wisdom of crowds. Uh, you know, we have 80 people who show up in every different discipline. And you know, no matter how esoteric, uh, the company uh, talk uh, comes about, somebody will put their hand up and say, well, I did my PhD in this topic and starts drilling them. And if you look at the philosophy of the wisdom of crowds, how they work, it's really having an interdisciplinary set of people uh, who uh, comment, agree, disagree, um, you know, light levels of communication. Uh, often the expert, you know, being, being sort of, thinking well what's the expert thing i find this even in my own fields often people in the incumbents in their field are the most critical of of a new entrant which by definition may be trying to disrupt that field and so yes you should definitely listen to the expert but not be be, be make it be the be all and end all um and in having the right information we have a process where uh, we, uh, we we have input uh, at the meeting, we have input after the meeting, we then interview them and delivering the information in a sort of a light but targeted uh, way. And so uh, getting diversity. And so in a way, if you get, if you can actually, as an angel, uh, as you can, if you get the right group, you can actually be stronger than a quote unquote professional uh, venture capital firm. And that's my, my thesis. So what is the career of an angel investor? 
Um, you know, I think this is after Ken Morse at Sloan. Uh, he's, he's retired there, and Bill Ouellette is uh, Professor Ouellette's taking his place. But he once showed this career, right? Okay, uh, it usually stems from entrepreneurs. You know, they go to go to college, uh, then they work for a company, uh, or they might do a PhD. Uh, then they go come to MIT Sloan, of course, uh, to get their uh, business degree. In my, in my day, it was called uh, Management Science and uh, a Master of Science in Management Science because we believe at MIT that management is a science, uh, not an administrative art. Uh, you start a company, you start another company, uh, then you be a, become an angel investor because you know enough about how to start a company and you can have empathy with the companies. And then optionally, you might become a VC as well, the sort of direction I'm going to. Uh, and so um, I think uh, I'll stop there. Uh, there's a number of set of meetings from the different chapters in the next uh, few months that people might be interested in. If you go, to, and then this is the NorCal site, but in, within the NorCal site, there are links to all the other chapters uh, as well. And uh, I'll stop there and look at the chat, or I guess people can uh, turn their recording on as well and um let's see oh yes yeah, so you can get all the slides uh um for both of my presentations uh you can get all the slides just send me an email and the like so let's see yeah how does mit angels compare to avg well the avg castor event there's alumni venture that is actually a for-profit fund it's run for the benefit of the organizers and there's a fee there's a set of fees and uh, carry a percent. What carry means is the percentage of the profits goes to the organizers, uh, and they cannot use the MIT um, brand name. And um, that, uh, where the MIT chapters, uh, no one gets paid. Uh, we really do it really for, uh, for uh, uh, one, to look at cool companies, interact with each other. Uh, Michael Thomas says, Yes, you need to be accredited. What does accredited mean? Accredited means that you need the current laws say you either have to um, work for the company itself uh, or you have to um, uh, have a minimum of uh, $200,000 uh, earnings, uh, I think it's in the last two years, or $300,000 earnings if you're a couple, or have a million dollars outside your um, a house as assets before you can make an investment uh, a couple more questions uh how can we yeah we we have no um uh, how can we join the uh, you just come in it's free there's no no charges there's a there's a link where you can just get on the mailing list and uh, you just have to be accredited that's the only thing uh and you have to be an mit alum if you're not an mit alum if there are people here you just have to find somebody who is and then you can come with them uh and uh, participate uh, what's the lowest dollar to be a useful angel investor? Either useful to the startup, useful to the angel group. Well, the power of an angel group is that, you know, um, if, if, if 100K is going in the company, we usually ask the company, uh, say, well, you know, what's the minimum you'll take? Often their usual minimum might be 25K, but we say, well, we're bringing 100K in. Uh, we've got a few people who want to put 5K in. Usually that's where they can, they can be in. And so quite often it might depend... Uh, just because it's a small number if, if, if the person has a deep expertise in that particular topic then they can uh, often be very very useful to the company and to the angel group um, as well uh let's see what have we got here um uh yes the uh yeah the elapsed time of the 182 percent it was about five years or so um and uh it's uh yeah won't these companies have a high capex needs so this is quite common right we talked a little bit about that on the we've got a few minutes five minutes we talked a little bit about that on the um dilution aspect because clearly like squeeze biotech um you know they had a lot of dilute they need that by the end of it they'd raise like 200 million plus right uh which is fine uh, because we will be one should expect to get diluted you will get diluted but does your absolute value increase and that's the key thing that's kind of the point i was trying to get across so just because uh you know the company that uh, got sold at 40 million they didn't need 200 million right and so it ended up being roughly the same uh in terms of the uh return so if you make that analysis on its own uh um and, and its own um, 
uh, appropriate um, uh, um, on its own needs. Let's see, we've got some other one. Yeah, do investors with uh, technical expertise often engage with the startups? Yeah, I mean, basically, often that's what um, the companies come, why they come to us, to our group, is that because they can get uh, a, a lot of uh, people who have expertise, because by definition, if you've accumulated, you know, a little bit of assets, by definition, you, you had a bit more experience, um, and you might have had experience in your career, and you might have contacts, you have a network, and you'd be able to um, be able to actually uh, help the company. Some no, sometimes the companies uh, are quite active in sourcing help from different individuals. Some less so. You really don't really know until after you've invested. In my experience. Um, how do you source a deal flow? Right now, because we're like four or five years old now, uh, a lot of um, you know, word of mouth, a lot. We send notes to the various accelerators in town. Uh, we send notes to, uh, there's about 20, 25 angel groups in Silicon Valley. Uh, so we invite the leaders of Berkeley Angels, Harvard Angels, um, et cetera, to, to our group. Often they have companies that come through and the, you know, often most of these, the other groups are more broader. They look at a much broader set of companies and uh, we uh, look at more of a deep science-y type. Uh, group. Um, let's see, we've got uh, a couple of minutes left, I think. Uh, let's see what's going on. Let's see. Uh, yes, what percent of deals angels look at? Yeah, about 30% of the companies that actually pitch actually get money. I think I mentioned that, uh, mentioned that before. Uh, let's see. Uh, can we get slides? Yes, it's, um, Okay, how do you decide which company has the potential to make it? Yeah, so we have a um, we have a committee. There's about seven people or so. Actually, I'm 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 really uh, trying to make let the other people decide, and then we all vote. Um, and the ones with the uh, the companies with the most common uh, votes actually uh, have um, uh, get get invited. Do you have thoughts about WeFunder or similar? Yeah, there's a mini industry of crowdfunding. Things. Uh, I mean, most of them, except for PropelX, are of a wider. PropelX does a does a very um, just deep science. Uh, but all of those are like for profit. There's a difference between the for profit organisations versus uh, you know the university angel groups. Not just our university, other universities were typically not for profit. And so I would argue that that might be an advantage that we are thinking about: is it a good investment or not? Whereas the uh, those other groups need to. Uh, actually uh that they're thinking they need to get them flow through so let's see we i think we're all set patricia is that right yes Ranjan, can you hear me yeah yes we fund us a, a, a start started by mit slans too yeah great yes we get rounds yes i might there's, there's, a, there's a very very excellent network at mit and sloan uh, in this field 